Hi everyone, my name is Jesse and today I'm here with uh, Dr. Ajith Fernando. Uh, Ajith has been deeply involved in the training of God's ministers. Uh, his ministry includes mentoring younger staff and Christian workers, both in Sri Lanka and abroad. To date, he has authored 15 books published in 18 different languages and he's currently serving on a translation team for a new Sinhala Bible. It's a pleasure to have you here today, Ajith. Uh, I understand that you've been working with Youth for Christ and young adults for quite a while. Uh, how long, when, when did this start? Well, I, actually, I joined Youth for Christ in my teens. Uh, then was part of it when I was a university student. Yes. Then I went to seminary for four and a half years abroad. Yes. Came back into the same ministry and have stuck with that. Now it's 36 years. 36 years. Yeah, full wow. time. Well, wow, quite yeah. a while. Uh, what are some of the pain and joys you've had serving with younger people? Well, um, uh, young people go up and down, you know, so sometimes they are all excited and then, then they give up everything. Yes, yes. It's one of the pains has been to see some people who are so excited about the gospel, no yeah. longer excited. Okay. Uh, the joy, of course, is to see many, many who have gone on. Yes. And now that I've been around for so long, yeah. uh, to see so many people in churches, pastors, lay leaders, uh, spouses of pastors, uh, who came to know Christ in their teens and who are now going on with God. I think that's one of the great joys. Oh, oh that's fantastic. So, but it must have been quite a, quite a challenge for you all these years as well. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, ministry is always challenging. Yeah. And, um, and Youth for Christ has had its challenges. Yeah. Uh, youth ministry is a very strange type of ministry. Very difficult to get outsiders excited about it. Yes. Fundraising is always an issue. Yes, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, when you feel God has called you to do it, uh, the happiest place is to, is to be where God called you to be. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So you would say that that's what's kept you in this yeah. for, for, the, for the amount of time, yeah. for the 36 years that you've been serving. Oh, that's incredible. So, I mean, you must have met many different kinds of young people in your time there. Is there any one in particular uh, who you have a very fond memory of or a time that you've really ministered yeah. to someone? The particular ministry that I, I have personally been very involved with has been with um, urban uh, people from the slums, poor people. Yes. So those are people who come with a lot of hurts. Yeah. So, um, uh, in fact, I, 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 I sometimes feel that God kept me in youth ministry for so long because these people need a father. Yes. You know, they don't have a father figure in their own home. So God has allowed me to, to disciple several young staff who've come from very difficult backgrounds and uh, to show them uh, concern and love and uh, to see them coming, growing, becoming staff, yeah. then becoming parents, having their own children. Uh, so that's been one of my real joys. And there are about three or four of such people who, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, uh, when, when people like this join staff, because they're from such rough backgrounds, yeah. they don't behave sometimes in the way that you would expect a refined Christian to behave. Yes. So some people uh, who are from more, uh, you know, sanitized backgrounds yeah. uh, may uh, wonder, what are these guys doing? Why are they acting this way? Yeah, of course. So what I say is, uh, if they... If, if, if they went the way they should have been going, mm. either they'll be dead by now, mm. or they'll be in prison, yeah. or they will be leading a gang. Yeah. And now they're serving God, mm. you know? And so uh, sometimes, you know, we have to, things that we take for granted, we have to teach them. But uh, these are people who have just known what a rough life was, and who have come to God and one of the things that I have learned from such people is prayer. For some reason, these people who, who've gone, you know, into, to, who have come to Christ from these backgrounds, yes. they become people of prayer. Because I guess they, they realize that God is the one they have to cling to because mm -hmm. they are rejected by the whole world at one time and then they are accepted by Christ. Yeah. So uh, one of the great joys of working with urban poor has been how much I have learned from them. They've taught me, taught me so much yeah. about life, about ministry, and, and that's been a great joy.
What advice would you give to someone who's considering moving into a similar kind of ministry or, or any ministry for that matter? Well, one of the things I would like them to know is that this is God's call. Now, God doesn't call everyone to a lifestyle, a lifetime of youth ministry. Mm. But a lot of people are called for that. And also a lot of people are called for a substantial, you know, a substantial stint yes. in youth ministry. Uh, and the thing that I would like them to have in their mind is, have I been called? Yeah. And of course, I mean, there is no f formula to say you have yeah, been called. But, um, but if they know that they have been called and they are willing to commit themselves to young people, uh, I think that's what I, that's what I would like to see. I mean, I'm not uh, what you might call a typical youth worker. Mm. I'm, I've never been that. I've been more bookish type person. Yeah. But um, what I tell people is, you don't have to have a great sense of humor yeah. to be a youth worker. But you must, you must be able to appreciate uh, humor. Yeah. Right? Because let them do the uh, laughing, uh, the joking. We'll do the laughing. Yeah. Okay. You know? <laughs> uh, in other words, um, if you love to be with young people, if they don't make you impatient, yeah. I mean, those are signs that maybe God has called you to, to youth ministry. Yeah, sure. Now, I understand you've also done quite a bit of theological study as well. What advice would you give to someone who wants to pursue that kind of, uh, that kind of career or those kind of specific theological yeah. studies? Yeah, again, it is a sense of call. Mm. You know, sometimes people think that a theological degree is a necessary qualification. Well, it is in some mm. ways. But again, has God called me to do these studies? Uh, I know people who had fantastic ministries, who felt they have to go higher and higher and higher doing higher studies. And actually they lost. They lost some of the ministry that they could have had. Yeah. And their younger years were better than their older years. Mm. So people doing theological studies, the thing that I would really strongly suggest to them is that they maintain the same type of Christian life they had before. What do I mean by that? Spending time with God, studying the Bible devotionally, mm. being involved with people, being involved in a ministry, however busy you are in study, mm. to be involved in a ministry of some sort. These are disciplines that keeps one's mind, uh, one's feet on the ground. Mm. And when you're studying theology and doing that, the theology becomes amazingly relevant. Yeah. Because you, you realize, oh, this is the answer to this problem that I'm facing. Mm. Uh, when you look at theology in that way, it comes alive. And you can maintain your freshness and, and consequently be a help to the church. Yeah. Because you are doing ministry, spending time with God and studying. studying yeah. And you know, out of that comes a, a penetrative ministry. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks, Ajith, for your time and for sharing with us here today. I'm, I'm sure we can all uh, appreciate and learn from your heartfelt thoughts. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, you too. Yeah.